Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. Uh, I am the technical chairperson for the Rolls-Royce Club of Southern California, and we are holding our monthly tech meet. And today, we will be resealing a rear shock for a silver cloud. All right, back to the shock here. Now, this is where I do not use the RTV. Because you, see, you can see this stuff. If I were to squirt it on here, and squeeze that thing down, this little hole right here would be plug solid. Mm -hmm. So the shock would not work right. So that's why they put these together dry, but I, I like this stuff for that. This is a Permatex aircraft sealant or whatever they call it. Usually you gotta stir it up because it gets all sedimented. This stuff is nasty. Now, what's the criteria for using that versus RTV? The RTV will plug the small orifice and this will not. And why won't this? Because it's, it doesn't dry like that. It, it dries much differently. In fact, it, it pretty much stays kind of tacky forever. Mm, it's pretty amazing. So, I just take a little bit. And since they put this together dry, it doesn't, doesn't take much. This stuff, I'm reusing an old gasket. I didn't ruin it. So you just basically paint the top of the surface there? Yeah, that's it. It's impossible to put this thing on wrong because it has different size studs. I mean, you could, no, you couldn't even flip it. You could do it that way, but then the holes wouldn't line up. So it's but you not impossible, but, oh, I mean, it, yeah, it's not impossible to put it wrong. If you're paying attention, it is. You gotta line those up with the right holes. Now, why don't you use the that sealer sealant uh, around the on this metal layer? Well, you can, but I'm not gonna. Okay. It was dry there. I'm gonna just put it on this side, just because you said that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the story of my life. <laughs> You can't do that. Oh, yeah? Watch me. I am, and that's that, to my own demise, to be honest with you. But here I am. You showed that little uh, piece that s slid in and out on that uh, mm -hmm. plate. Did I see you put that in, or does it go no, on the plate? No, they, they don't way? go on the plate, they go on this housing. Now, these are 3 8 bolts, so they're about 30 to 35 pounds, usually torque. Why is that one, a five, six bolt on that? Here, but also it helps incorrect, or preventing incorrect assembly. But it's probably just because they needed that space for this thing. Now, if you guys recall, this valve went in first, and it should be spring-loaded. I think the spring is in this other housing over here. I guess not. Oh yeah, I feel it now. It's spring-loaded. See that? So I just found a pretty generic O-ring that I have. I have lots of O-rings floating around. This one's actually a little bit... There we go. It's on there. Was there any specific orientation for that valve you just put in, Ronnie? Or? This thing? The valve that you... No, it was... I, I looked at it when I took it apart. The groove cut in it was in the exact center. What was the groove for? It's to Direct change the, the fluid. fluid passaging. I see. And if I remember correctly, this went this way with the wires coming over here, so... Anyways, yeah. got a tape. So my O-ring just jumped out again on me. This O-ring's not quite perfect, but you want any O-ring that you use to be a Buna or what's another good one that'll stand up to oil? Buna's the most generic. That's a brand name? That is a specification, right? Buna? Or butyl rubber? Is that not butyl. It's the same as nitrile. Nitrile too, yeah, that's the other one, yeah. Not Chinese. 
Do not use EPDM. I think the oil will eat it up, which is what you use on brake fluid applications, EPDM. I've got to still bleed out the shock, fill it and bleed it. So Now it's together. All right. 